Finally, a tribute to an icon. Fred Rogers hosted almost 900 episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, over 31 seasons on public broadcasting stations. The film, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, opens today and explores the friendship that Rogers forged with a magazine writer. Jeffrey Brown talked with the stars of the film, Tom Hanks and Matthew Reese in New York. It's part of our ongoing arts and culture series, Canvas. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Tom Hanks has morphed into many characters over his storied film career, but in Fred Rogers, he says, he met his match. The film, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, was directed by Mariel Heller. Mari, who is ironclad in her discussions about yes. what she's going to do, she said essentially, you'll get a wig, you'll get some eyebrows, you'll get a sweater and blue deck shoes. The rest of it is up to you. Do you know what this is? It's Lloyd. His foil is a driven and cynical journalist sent to write a profile of Mr. Rogers for Esquire magazine. And the film is based on a true encounter in 1998. Played by Matthew Reese, best known for his role as a Russian spy in The Americans, the journalist is confounded by the sincere... It's wonderful to meet you. So glad you're here, Lloyd. I'm looking forward to... ...and glacially paced Mr. Rogers. And as it turns out, so was the Welsh actor, Reese. So did you know Mr. Rogers growing up in Wales? Not a jot. Not a jot? Nothing. I dived into YouTube and, and thought, what's going on? I had no idea. It seemed bizarre to me that this... I was like, has he forgotten his lines? Is that why he speaks so slow? <laughs> this is, what's happening? What's been incredible was having a, a three-year-old son... To, yeah, you have young kids. Yes, right? and yeah. for him to be the conduit of, of what it truly is has been eye-opening and equal part groundbreaking. Reese would come to see what millions had. Fred Rogers was utterly unique in the history of television. An ordained minister on a mission to reach, teach, and help children be themselves. He didn't shy from serious subjects, including divorce, death, and racism and every child felt he was speaking directly to him or her. I asked the two actors about their experience in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. For Hanks, as for many of us, one question lingered, was this guy for real? What is he trying to sell? And he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't trying to sell anything. He was trying to make little kids feel safe. So for me as an actor, it's, it's like, what are, what are my myriad natural tendencies as a human being that are going to have to be whipped in, <laughs> into submission yeah. so that I'm not falling into that same brand of cynical presentation. There is a DNA that you sort of have to inject into yourself at the same time that you put on that version of Batman's cape and cowl, except it's a red cardigan sweater and, and blue deck shoes. The individual scenes between the two of us of which there's five or six in mm. the course of the movie, mm. were exhausting. Mm. <laughs> they were as physically exhausting and physiologically exhausting as any scenes I've ever played. Do you consider yourself a hero? I don't think of myself as a hero. No, not at all. What about Mr. Rogers? Is he a hero? I, I don't understand the question. Well, there's you, Fred, and then there's the character you play, Mr. Rogers. These two men kind of circled each other with, with different intentions, but also I'm, but I'm, I'm seemingly the same you. tactics of, of waiting and questioning um, until one either broke or opened up. Reese's character, here called Lloyd Vogel, visits the set to interview Fred Rogers. But Rogers wants only to know Vogel to understand him and his struggles, especially his anger at a father who abandoned the family long ago and now seeks reconciliation and forgiveness. If I was going to show you, uh, admit to you what the first day of shooting was, you, I would point out to you how I'm talking too fast, <clears throat> uh, I'm not being as specific as I need to, uh, I'm not waiting for an, I'm not really listening because I'm kind of like <laughs> petrified. Minute and think about all the people who loved us into being. My perspective of you on that day is completely different. And you kind of came in with this, it was like, you, it was like what they said about Rogers, everything slowed down because you, you, 
you didn't dictate a tempo, you actually just listened, and that in itself dictates a tempo. There's, there's this moment I kind of had that, oh God, he's got, he's got it! My neighbor. With Fred Rogers, there's another element, because the question was, was he acting? So are you acting as Fred Rogers, who's acting as Mr. Rogers? Absolutely. There is a performance that he was giving. There was, uh, there was rules that he was following that were based on his philosophy at the same time. on how to do this. So who was the real Fred Rogers, or who was the real Mr. Rogers? I heard an, uh, an audio tape. Uh, there was a child psychologist who was one of his great mentors uh, that, he, that he discussed everything with. And they were talking about trying to come up with an opera for children. And this lady had this kind of, hey, well, wait a, well, what I think what we could do is, is the thematic element of the chorus here with the frog could actually be a bridge to the original theme of the first act. Pause, 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 pause. And this is Mr. Rogers now. Yes. If the frog could have a worry that he brings, and these are just people talking. This, these are people <laughs> at work trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to, you know, this is like a production meeting that he's going on, and he still put that brand of of, of thought to it. I think, the, to me, what seemingly the performance element is only to succeed in a greater communication to that to that audience at which it is aimed. Fred Rogers believed in the power of television, mm -hmm. right? As a tool for change, a tool for reaching people. Television hasn't really worked out that way. Well, he didn't change television on, a, as a technology or as an art form, but look what he created for a half hour at a time. Extraordinarily wise, smart things that made children understand the world a little bit better. If you only get a half hour out of that, you know, once a day, I think you're still a half hour ahead of the curve. What about in the general culture of film like this? Do you think there is a craving, a need for uh, Fred Rogers? Don't you think there's some like marketing? Because I say, you know what we got here? <laughs> what we have here is counter programming. Yes. You see yes. what I'm saying? I like what it. we're going to do is going to have the guy with the puppets. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's we'll good. We'll shoot it in Pittsburgh. Yes. Well, no, I think we can work if we hit it. <laughs> If we hit the counter-programming situation. It is like this, in, there's an incredible symphony going on at all times, and it's in the pause that sometimes the greatest potency is, is found. And I think if we do that for a, a, a small number of people, for a brief moment, so much so the better. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood ended its television run on PBS in 2001. Fred Rogers died two years later at age 74. It's a beautiful day. The new film, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, opens today around the country. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in New York. That was wonderful. A reminder, we could sure use Fred Rogers right now. Uh, can't wait to see this film.